या देवी सर्वभूतेशु मात्रूपेण संस्थिता नमस्त 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 नमो नम नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू ए फ्यू वर्ड्स अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दुर्गा पूजा विच इज अ वेरी फेमस celebration celebrated throughout our country and especially i would like to focus its significance as celebrated in west bengal we know from ancient times the supreme can be worshiped not only as male but as feminine the divine mother herself this mother worship is something very special to india and not found elsewhere and in vaishnava religion we know how the divine can be approached by five attitudes such as shanta dasya madhura sakhya and vatsalya out of this in that vatsalya type of attitude god is loved like one son ch- child just as yashoda or uh, devaki had great devotion and love towards lord krishna bala krishna the in the tantra matha which is the special scripture for the worship of the divine mother this role is somewhat reversed that is here the devotee becomes the child and the god the divine mother so she who is the divine mother our relation with our mother is the nearest it starts before our birth while we are still in the womb of the mother and continues from birth till the end so mother is the most intimate person to every child so this relation can be applied towards the divine mother also it is she who is the creator or the projector of this whole universe and she sustains it and finally she destroys it also shri ramakrishna used to say this child's love towards the mother is the purest attitude that a devotee can have towards god and just like any ordinary human mother the love of child towards the mother the devotee also can have such love towards divine mother that is the human relation or attitude can be divinized in order to realize the divine mother in bengal especially there were many such sadhakas for example ram prasad premik kamala khan and in recent times sri ramakrishna himself who practice this attitude of child's love for the mother which we can call as matrabhava and in fact shri ramakrishna even after he had nirvikalpa samadhi this was his main stay throughout his he life his maintained this attitude of love towards mother and shri ramakrishna started his worshiping divine mother in the image of kali in the dakshineshwar temple and ultimately he found the divine mother in all beings he treated all women as the representatives of divine mother including his own divine consort shri sharada devi also again we find some of the sadhakas are there who are not satisfied with loving god as mother only they would also like to treat the uh, divine mother as their daughter or kumari so that is somewhat similar to the vatsalya bhava that we find in the vaishnava devotees so the divine mother she is like a baby she is treated as a baby awakened from sleep she is given the holy bath and she is offered flowers sandal paste all beautiful dress ornaments naivedya dhup deep everything and devotee finds a great satisfaction in all this so both these attitudes of vatsalya bhava and matr bhava are included in the durga puja festival holy mother used to say god loves to sport as human being god loves naralila to fulfill the desire of the devotee the divine mother is born as kumari as the daughter also that happened many times in ancient times for example in the puranas we read how when daksha prajapati he worshiped the divine mother he did lot of austerities 
for getting her as his daughter and satisfied by severe tapasya the divine mother was born as sati devi dakshakanya and from childhood sati devi accepted mahadeva shiva as her divine husband but that was not the to the approval of daksha so when daksha performed a big sacrifice he invited all other daughters but he did not invite shiva and sati and sati devi in spite of that goes to attend that sacrifice and seeing that her husband was dishonored in that way she was very much distressed and she gives up her body in uh, uh, in uh, yoga and again in the next incarnation the same divine mother she is born as parvata rajakumari to the king himavan and menaka devi his wife they had also done severe tapasya for getting the divine mother as their daughter so she incarnated as parvati uma or gauri that's why we call shaila putri prathamam shaila putri ti we read in the chandi she became famous as shaila putri at the same time a famous demon tarakasur had become so powerful and invincible he defeated all the gods and he banished them from their heavenly abodes and occupied their places so the distressed god they approached chaturmukha brahma for some solution and they came to know from brahma that it was subramanya or kartikeya who would be born as the son of lord mahadeva shiva and he would become deva senapati commander of gods and destroy tarakasura but lord shiva was deeply immersed in samadhi after the passing away of sati devi only divine mother can bring him down to the normal plane now that divine mother herself was born as uma or parvati the daughter of himavan and menaka so that is also that also happened for the welfare of mankind only as parvati grew she also selected shiva as her husband her eternal uh, husband throughout her uh, in any incarnation and she performed severe tapasya and austerities for attaining shiva as her husband and here also we find um, in spite of her mother menaka and himavan they try to warn her not to do so much austerity but she did so much tapasya she neglected uh, even her food rest and everything ultimately she even stopped taking even a single leaf as food and that's why she became famous as aparna uh, and finally shiva was pleased and accepted her as his wife and so she with the permission of her parents menaka and himavan she marries lord shiva and she goes to himalaya and she became kailasa vasini and their son kartikeya or subramanya swami he destroyed tarakasur and gods were delighted and were reinstalled into their respective positions this is only a story in our puranas now the poets and the devotees in the bengal they take this beautiful situation and they create a beautiful family situation a setting and wrote many melodious songs explaining the feelings of menaka and himavan and also the feelings of their daughter uh, uma so worldly relations are incidents they were elevated to divine heights depicting a divine leela now this durga puja what is the time most auspicious for celebrating this now we are for example now we are celebrating at this time this is sharath kal or autumn season and so this puja navaratri is called sharadiya navaratri this is sharadiya durga puja this is in contrast to the worship of divine mother which is also done in the spring season vasanta rutu and that is called vasanta navaratri actually the durga worship in the vasanta rutu that was the original durga worship that was started by king suratha who had lost his kingdom and worship divine mother to regain his kingdom and but somehow the people did not have so much interest in that durga puja and this sharadiya durga puja has become more famous and common now as the durga puja 
that happened when in treta yuga shri ramachandra he worshiped divine mother to destroy ravana and get back his wife sita and that happened in sharat kal so it is believed also that now this durga puja that we are conducting in sharat kal this is the time when gods are sleeping it is said the gods are sleeping for 6 months of the year and they are awake for the other 6 months but the time of gods and the human beings does not tally so what is one day for gods is equal to one year for the human beings so in that one year the day time for gods one day time that is equal to 6 months for the human beings the one night time is equal to other 6 months for the human beings so in this this present time that is sharat kal this is supposed to be the time when gods are asleep so if we want to do durga puja in this season first of all we have to awaken them from their sleep then only they can accept the puja so they are the a special procedure is performed that is called bodhan and it is also called akala bodhan because it is a untimely awakening of the gods from their sleep to accept durga puja in sharat kal if we do worship of the divine mother in the other season that is in the spring season or any other season when gods are supposed to be awake then we need not do this akal bodhan so in this durga puja the devi is like a child the baby who is lying down in the uh, shadow of bilva vriksha and in the shashti sandhya kal she has to be awakened from her sleep and this is the season of sharat kal you know it comes of the rainy season it is a beautiful season when we see the rivers and ponds uh, the water is still and clear with lotuses and we find the sky is also very clear with only white clouds moving here and there this in this season the fields are full of green paddy and grass also and kash flowers a spe- specific type of grass flowers that we find more in bengal it is common everywhere so also we find the rain drops on the grass shining sparkling in this time and also the fragrance of the parijat flowers spreading everywhere so it appears the beautiful nature is welcoming the divine mother for this durga puja they are inviting her to come to this earthly abode so the devoted poets they wrote so many songs called as agamani songs welcoming the divine mother from her heavenly abode kailas to this earth now in this songs is depic- depicted the beautiful family setting we know how in any family the parents they have to send their daughter after marriage to their husband's house but they feel so sad for sending their uh, daughter and they expect that uh, the daughter should come back after a year at least to meet them back the devotees the parents are feeling so anxious to meet their daughter and the daughter is also anxious to meet their parents it is a common incident in any family home so this has been uh, depicted through the agamani songs how the menaka the mother menaka and himavan the parents of parvati uma they are so anxious to meet their daughter they are they are so sad for sending away their daughters to her husband's house and it is such a long time she has not yet come so it is expressed in all these songs the wife of himavan menaka is pleading to himavan her husband to go to uh, the house of um, uma and bring her daughter back to house why she is delaying so much maybe her husband the shiva her son in law is not sending her uh, some problem maybe there she also tells her husband that how she saw in dreams that uh, uma was weeping and uh, uh, she was uh, and she is uh, also calling her ma ma and weeping and she says i saw my daughter with golden few now she is smearing herself with ashes and wandering in the cremation ground with that beggar like shiva and so uh, also she says uh, my daughter maybe she is having some trouble you please go and bring and side by side with this idea that uma is their daughter 
also this idea that she is divine mother herself also so uma comes in the dream of menaka also sometimes as the goddess uh, durga riding on her vahana the lion sometimes she comes as kali with in black in color and naked vivasana and trinayana having three eyes she is accompanied by such associates like dakini yogini shakini all of them and sometimes she is laughing loudly in hatta hasya all these things make menaka very much troubled she is wondering why all such changes have come over my daughter maybe it is all due to shiva's company and she decides that this time when my daughter comes back to home i shall not send my daughter to her husband's house again let the people society whatever they may criticize or complain now giriraj himavan he is also anxious to meet his daughter but you know he is a man he cannot show his emotions and weep like menaka he is by nature he speaks less but he expresses his helplessness because lord shiva is not very willing to send uma back so the divine mother she enjoys this beautiful play this and she enjoys this intimate relation the love of her parents menaka and himavan menaka's love towards her and that is pulling her to this earthly abode she is also uma also is anxious to meet her parents it is already one years gap so she pl- places her request in front of her husband mahadev shiva she tells how my parents are anxious to meet me they are spending every moment uh, with great difficulty and how difficult for them if not seeing her face and she tries to convince him that she will go only for a short time and come back but shiva is not very much uh, pleased with this idea of uma going to her parents he is reminded of her previous incarnation when as sati devi uh, uh, he she went uh, to their parents uh, daksha prajapati and she was so much uh, distressed and she even gave up her body so who knows when parvati will come back or not so shiva is not at all very pleased with the idea but now she somehow convinces her husband and finally with great persuasion he gives the permission and she comes to her parents house so the long expectation is over the kailasa vasini is coming to the earth the nature is welcoming uh, her with all these songs and all this and divine mother who had responded to the call of uh, shri ramachandra due to akal bodhan and who had responded to the call of katyayana muni again she has been awakened by the prayers of her children and she arrives to the earth she doesn't come alone you know you come she comes with her whole family she comes with her daughter goddess lakshmi who is going to bring all prosperity and wealth and another daughter goddess saraswati who brings knowledge and wisdom and two sons ganesh who fulfills all the wishes and desires of the devotees and kartikeya or subramanya who is going to destroy the enemies not only that they all come with their vahanas durga comes riding on her fierce lion and lakshmi comes on her owl and saraswati comes on her swan ganesha he is a mushika vahana and kartikeya on the peacock and she comes on the auspicious day of the shashti and after the three days saptami ashtami and navami she has to go back uh, on dashami to her kailas abode so menaka when the daughter has come she has so much intimate conversation with her daughter she asks her daughter well my dear daughter what i am here is it all true when i sent you as the wife of lord shiva he was like a beggar and people criticized me and i felt so bad and depressed now i am hearing that you have become the queen of kashi dham and you are famous as annapurna and that beggar like shiva he has become the lord of kashi and he is vishwanath all this must have happened due to your luck and she feels so proud because of her daughter uh, and menaka uh, now divine mother uh, she also feels oh after 3 days my daughter has to go back she prays to the navami tithi that may it not be over may the dashami may not come at all 
so that my daughter can stay with me always. But time and tide wait for none, and she forgets that Uma is not only her daughter, she is the Divine Mother. How can she retain her here? She has to send her back to Lord Shiva. But it is all the feelings of parents towards their daughter and daughters to her parents. Uma also somehow tries to convince her mother that she has to go back to her Lord Shiva because she says she cannot displease him when he, he was not at all willing to send her, when somehow she convinced that he, uh, she would come within a short time also, he was floating in tears. Uma tells her mother, you see he is Bholanath, he cannot care for himself, he forgets to have food or sleep and he doesn't know where he will be at what time. So unless I go and look after him, who is there to look after? So I must go back and look after him. And she convinces her parents that she has to return to Kaila. So this beautiful, affectionate, intimate relation where sometimes devotee is the magnet pulling the heart of the divine or sometimes the divine mother becomes magnet pulling the devotee's mind or sometimes the devotee becomes the lotus and the divine mother the bee and sometimes vice versa. So that can be experienced by we ourselves also we can identify either with Menaka or Himavan and feel that intimate love, affection uh, at the, with the uh, Divine Mother and that can become part of our spiritual practices to realize her. If the Divine Mother comes with all her glories, with ten hands and so many uh, vahana and so, uh, so many decorations and all grandeur and glory, you see, how can we easily approach her? We may become afraid. So, she would also like to come as humanly as possible, just as a daughter, very simple and innocent also. So, this aspect is also so beautiful. <coughs> Sri Ramakrishna tells, when devotion deepens, the devotee does not like to see God with all the grandeur and Aishwarya, not as powerful God with ten hands and so much of weapons and all. We would like to see the lesser the glamour and grandeur, the intimate, more intimate will be the love and affection. So this attitude of Goddess as the daughter is also a beautiful thing. And these both attitudes of Vatsalya Bhava and this Matra Bhava are beautifully depicted in this Durga Puja we can see. The mother sometimes she comes in her uh, powerful aspect destroying the enemies, she is Abhaya, Varada and she is in the, that aspect. At other times, she comes as simply our dear daughter, affectionate daughter who feels sad to leave us and go back to her house. We also cry and weep for her that she is having both two attitudes. Sometimes she is Saumya, this Saumya very calm, sometimes she is Rudra that is terrible. Both aspects are uh, something special in this case of Durga Mata. And so this is the time when um, it is auspicious also we study, we read, we love to chant Chandi or Devi Mahatma which is uh, which is a part of Markandeya Puran and it consists of 700 mantras. It is believed that if we chant the Chandi we get Shakti whereas if we chant Gita we get more devotion. So, this Chandi and Gita, Bhagavad Gita, they are both are very important scriptures for us and both are depicted with the background of battleground. And we may wonder why so much as fighting and warriors and killing and all this, what is the important? You must remember all this is only secondary. What is more important is the message behind all that. You see, it is all a very symbolic story showing how there is constant fight between the asuric and divine qualities in this world. In today's world, we may not see the asuras or demons outside. They are all inside the human mind only. So, the divine mother comes, she destroys all the evil propensities within us and she helps to awaken the uh, divine nature in us and divine sattvic qualities. In fact, the Divine Mother is Trigunatmika and she is also Gunatita. 
she has three sattva, raja, tamo, all these three qualities they say. So in this Chandi or Devi Mahatma we find there are three parts. In the first part what is called Prathama Charitra, she is uh, predominantly uh, tamo guna pradhana. So what she does is she removes the um, uh, uh, delusion or the yoga nidra, she awakens Lord Vishnu from his yoga nidra on the other hand she deludes the Madhu Kaitava, these Asuras and make them give a boon to Lord Vishnu which will be the cause of their own destruction and that happens in the first part. In the second part what is called the Madhyama Charitra, there the, uh, the Divine Mother is Maha Lakshmi who is supposed to be Rajoguna Pradhana, she kills the famous Asura Mahishasur and becomes famous as Mahishasura Mardini. And in the last of the Uttama Charitra, the Maha Saraswati is extolled, who is Sattvaguna Pradhana and who destroys the Shumbha and Nishumbha Asuras. All these Asuras are nothing but the evil tendencies and qualities within us only and Mother destroys them and uh, makes us go beyond the Trigunas and ultimately realize her. And she is capable of giving whatever we, she, we pray to her. We find for the worldly people, she gives all prosperity, wealth and everything, just like she did the, to the Suratha Raja in this Chandi, who wanted to get back his kingdom, so she gives that to him. Whereas she gives to the wiser people knowledge and wisdom by which they can realize her. So the other person who we come across is Samadhi, the name of that Vaishya or the businessman. Both of them had worshipped the Divine Mother, but the Samadhi got over all his delusion and he prayed for wisdom and knowledge and the Divine Mother gave that to him. So she is Bhukti Mukti Daini. Whatever we pray that she is going to give to all of us. So that is the uh, whole of the Chandi is a symbolic book where we pray to the Divine Mother for realizing her greatness and glory and uh, ultimate um, wisdom and knowledge will be showered on us. So let us pray to the Divine Mother, may she shower us with that devotion towards her lotus feet and may she remove all the ignorance and all the demonic qualities and weaknesses from our mind. May she awaken the spiritual tendencies so that we can, we can all uh, worship her and achieve her. So in this auspicious season of Durga Puja, let us all worship the Divine Mother with devotion and pray for her blessings. Om Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Amritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsu